party out of this. Oh, okay. I wasn't like, you were looking at me. I was like, <laughs> in this car. I feel cold. I'm not cold. Good morning. You have made the wake up list. Good morning. Praise God. It is Worship Wednesday. Um, guess what? You woke up on top of the grass instead of underneath it. You are in the land of the living. Right? You get another opportunity to get this thing right called life. Um, to try to get your, your mind in order, your body in order, your spirit in order. You get another opportunity. Don't miss out on this opportunity to try to get your life together. Um, today on Worship Wednesday, I feel like it's just really a day we really just need to give God honor and thanks. I was strolling through um, TikTok last night, right? And there's this song that is um, trending. And it, it, it talks to those who are having mental health issues. And when I first heard the song, I thought about how peaceful the song was. How, you know, sometimes you do just want to get away. You do just want to be away from, you know, people. You do just want to have, you know, a moment to yourself. But the problem that I'm finding is that people are using this song in a negative way. Remember, we talk about training our minds to see the positive in everything. I thought when I heard that song was like, God. That's a moment for you and I. When I'm all by myself, I want to get away from my family. I want to get away from my friends. I want to get away from the hustle of the world so that I can hear you, so that I can get connected with you, so that I can be able to be in a space where it's nothing but you and me. There's nobody else. There's no other worries. There's no other weight on my shoulders. There's no other thoughts. It's just you and me. And other people are taking that song and thinking that it's... it's speaking to the depression and the anxiety that they're thinking about but I'm I, when I think about that it's like what are you doing with that when you get in that alone time are you feeding your mind the things that the world is saying the diagnosis that the doctor gave you are, is that what you're feeding your mind are you constantly saying I have anxiety or I am um, bipolar I have um, bipolar disorder see is much is so much power in your words and when you start to claim those things you start to move and operate according to that so now you've talked yourself into a place that's really not where God planned you to be he said his, his thoughts towards you are good so if he planned for you to have good things then why do you think that he would allow you to be in a place where your mind is tormented where your mind is not at peace so when you find yourself in those moments that um, you're by yourself, you want to get alone, what are you doing with that alone time? You know what, you guys, I didn't even have a word for the day. I was like, Lord, I don't really know what you want me to talk about. But instantly when I turned on this camera, the Holy Spirit just really felt that it needed to talk about the mind and what you're doing in that space and that time when you are alone. Are you sharing that time with God? Are you laying your anxiety? Are you laying your disorder? Are you laying what people are saying about you at his feet so he can carry that load and not you? So you're not in a space where you're constantly telling yourself, I am 
I am depressed, I have anxiety, I have mental health issues. Are you telling yourself? Or if that is something, a space that you are in, are you seeking help for it? Or are you just staying in that place? Are you just staying in that, in that space? See, the wonderful thing about choice is that you get to choose who you are. You get to choose where you'll be. You get to choose the thoughts that you think. You get to choose how they manifest in your life. A lot of times we don't always control what our mind goes to. But guess what? You get to choose if you want to stay where your mind went. Last night I was having some thoughts that was that was very impure, right? I was having some thoughts that wasn't impure. I'm not going to share the thoughts with you because that was between me and God. But I had some thoughts that was really impure. And I was thinking like, okay, God, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to stay in this thought. It crept up in my mind, not just because of maybe it was a seed that was planted because of the things that I was watching, because I was flipping through TikTok and, the, and, and those seeds was being planted as I'm looking at the things on TikTok. So that seed was being planted. But guess what? I had the choice to decide on if I wanted to nourish that seed, if I wanted to feed into that seed, if I wanted to um, set my life according to what was being fed to me, I had the choice to eat it or not. So when you're you're clicking through TikTok, when you're looking into what everyone else is going through and you and you start to relate to it, don't stay in that space. Get to a space where you're healthy. Get to a space where you're healed. Don't stay in it. Trick your mind. You have to you have to really remember we talked about yesterday training your mind. You have to train your mind to see the good in things. You have to train your mind to believe that you are who God says you are. Have an amazing day. I love you guys. Bye. Good morning everyone. That's I decided to tune in. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to tune in. I appreciate you. Please if you just can do one thing for me is like and share. I'm not asking anything else for you to do. Just like and share because somebody needs to hear these words. Just like and share for me. Thank you. Are you popping popcorn? You popping popcorn? You growing some for everybody? <laughs> Why? I don't see her car out here. Is she here? Um. Okay. Good morning, Terrell. So, what we're talking about today, I really, like I said, when I tuned on it here, I really didn't have much to talk about. I told my kids, like, I, I don't even know what God wants me to talk about. But the one thing I do know is, like I said, every morning, every morning, I ask God to use me, that I'm your servant, I'm your vessel, use me. So that, that allows the Holy Spirit to move. That, that gives the Holy Spirit permission to speak through me. And I felt there was a real need to talk about um, this, this mental health and how heavy it is on our young men. You know, we, we really believe that it's really a woman thing, like really women deal with that. But we don't even address um, the things that our young men are going through, the, the pressure that they have on trying to be a man or not even just trying to be a man, just being able to be themselves right in a society especially our black man in a society that tells you that who you are is not acceptable that who you are is not okay you're not you're you're on the low totem pole of things and we don't think about how that affects the mind how that affects um how our men move and operate how that affects um the things that they say and do when we think about the music that we listen to when we think about the things that's put on TV about our young men, how much pressure that puts on them, and think, and they're not allowed to express how much pressure that is. They're not allowed to say it because we teach them from a young, from a young boy, hey, don't cry, boys, don't cry, don't don't feel, don't don't express what you're going through, suck it up. You a man, suck it up. Like, what does that mean? Because I'm a man, that means that I don't feel? 
that I don't have emotions, that I don't go through things. And the problem with teaching a young boy that is that he doesn't have a way to express what he's going through. So it's bottled in and that comes out sometimes violently. Just because they didn't get a chance to let it out peacefully. But at the same time, we have to take some responsibility for ourselves as well and tell ourselves like when somebody says something about me, when somebody feeds something into me, am I nourishing what they're feeding me? Am I eating on the negativity that they're feeding me or do I have a choice to say, you know what, I don't want that plate. I don't want to eat that. That's not who God says I am. That's not the spirit that dwells in me. God is not depressed. God is not filled with anxiety. Those are things of the enemy. That is not things that he gave us. God is filled with love. That's who I am. God said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's who I am. So those things that the world is trying to tell me I am, I don't accept. I don't eat that. That's not a plate that I want. At some point, we have to learn to take responsibility for our own actions and stop continually blaming other people, other situations, because everybody has a situation that's not ideal. Everybody has a plate that's being forced down their throat that they just necessarily don't want to eat, but because of the environment, because of the things that's going around them, they, ha they have a choice, but sometimes they don't have a choice, because especially when they're kids. So we as parents have to learn how to teach them when you have a choice to eat. That you don't have to be what people say that you are. You get to make a decision. In everything. If God gives you free will to choose and serve him, what makes you think that he does? He limits your free will in other areas of your life? What makes you think that he says that you get to choose whether or not to choose me, but you don't get to choose what people say about you and how it affects you. So again, I, what I'm asking you is when you get into those moments, when you get into those, those alone times where you separate yourself from people and you isolate yourself from people, what are you doing with that isolation? Because again, tricking your mind to believe, to see the positive in everything because sometimes isolation can be good. Because like I said, when I heard the song, the first time the first time I heard this song, the first thing I thought is, oh, great. I do have those moments where I do want to get away from everybody so I can just hear God, so I can just be in his presence, so I can just be relieved of whatever else is going on in my life and just have this moment with just me and God. Oh, how peaceful that would be. But other people was taking that as, that's torment. That's because you saw the negativity in it. What are you doing with that, that, time, of, um, that, that time of isolation? Because sometimes God will isolate you so you can hear him. Are those lights on? It don't look like they, oh, they on. But it look dark in there. It don't look like no one in there. So what are you doing with that time? What are you doing with that isolation, that, that, that time when you're by yourself, you're away from everybody else? Are you soaking in what people are saying about you? Are you soaking in what you're feeding yourself? Or are you using that as a time of healing? Are you using that as a time when um, you can find and get to know you and who God says you are and get to know God? Right? We have to be very cautious of the words that we say and even the words that we write. Because the Bible says, write it down and make it known. So even the words that you write, this is, oh my God, I want you to understand how powerful words are. I hate that saying when people say, um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That is a lie. Do not believe that. That is a trickery of the enemy. It sounds good. It sounds real nice to say. And everyone has used it. It sounds real nice to say, but it's a lie. It has just enough truth in it for you to believe in that lie. That's what how the enemy gets you. He puts just enough truth in it. 
just enough truth in it for you to believe it. it has just that saying has just enough truth in it for you to believe in it. But it's a lie. Words have power. Whether they're spoken or they're written, they have power. Look at the Bible. That that Bible has power. It has had power through generations. For years, it has had power, just those words. So be careful the words that you feed into yourself. Understand that this space, this space around you is sacred. It's sacred. You should be cautious of the people that you let in it. You should be cautious of the people that you let surround you, yourself with. You should be cautious of the words that you speak about it. You should be cautious of the words that you speak to it. This is a sacred place. God calls this body the temple. This is his temple. So honor it as that. Speak to it as that. And stop listening to what the world has to say. The world is telling you, you know what? You, you're bipolar. Right? So you start saying, I'm bipolar. You start, you start claiming that. Yeah, I'm bipolar. Yeah, I have anxiety. So you start walking around telling everybody, yeah, I have anxiety. I have bipolar, you know, and it could have been a misdiagnosis. These doctors don't know. <laughs> they really don't. They don't. And, I, and what my story that I told you yesterday is an example of how doctors don't know. I was told I could not have children. I could not. It said I couldn't carry it. Now I have four. <laughs> I'm told I can't have them, but now I have four of them. So Mom's if I would have walked around, oh, bye baby, have a great day. You too. You know, you couldn't give me some of that popcorn. Nope, though. that would be a negative profit. You don't have no thing to, um, to, um, uh -huh, in no the popcorn. cafeteria, we got some, uh, a microwave. Do you? Mm -hmm. Here, just give me. Thank you, Ma. <coughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll see you on the flip side. See you. Have a good day. Where's your coat? Huh? Oh, my coat. Oh, yeah. Good day. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I just gotta. You gotta get out. That's oh. what you gotta do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All that time you were sitting here, you could have been put your coat on. Oh, wow. I see how this is. I see exactly how this is. <laughs> I gotta get to work. I'll see you later. Bye. Have a great day. But anyway, so um, today we're just talking about just random. Um, like I said, I was watching TikTok yesterday and it li it literally had me in tears as I was looking because I was feeling the pain of these people as they were listening to the song that this guy, this guy wrote. Um, I can't think of the name of the song, but if you go through TikTok, it's real popular. Everyone is like really um, listening to the song and um, they're, you know, it's, it's trending. I can't think of the name of the song, but if you go on there, um, it's, it's, it talks about how you want to get away from your friends and your family. You just want to be alone. You want to go drive and have a drink, you know. Um, and uh, the song just really touched me in a way that I, when I heard it, like I said, it was the first thing I thought of is great. I would love to have this type of moment where I can just go. I love wine. Like I'm a, I'm a wine drinker um, where I can go just have a glass of wine, go get in my car, take a drive, get away from my family, my friends, and just sit there and bask in the presence of God. Like go, my, my thought when I was thinking of that, I was like, this would be a nice song to go and ride by the lake, you know, sit. Um, and, and look at, you know, the, the presence of God, the beauty of God, just sit and look at the water. Um, I love water because it, to me, it, um, signifies the flow of things. Um, and sometimes when you look at water, it looks never ending. And that's how I, I feel when I look at water, that my possibilities, the things in my life is never ending. Um, the, the, the areas that, um, I want to reach the, the, the goals that I want to attain are never ending. Um, and that, 
my limit is never ending. There's no limit for me. And that's the peace that I get when I go to the lake. And I was thinking when I heard this song was like, this would be a great song to ride to. But as I started to really, I went on the guy's page to hear the song and I started to scroll through um, what people were saying about the song and everybody was in pain. Everybody that heard this song was talking about the pain of it. And I didn't hear that at first. And see, this is why it's real careful about, you have to be real careful about what you feed yourself, what, what you listen to, because they started to make me feel like maybe this song is sad, <laughs> but that wasn't the feeling that I got at first. But because these people had planted a seed, my mind started to grasp to what they were feeling. And I started to get sad about the song and start crying. And I was like, Lord, I'm not depressed. <laughs> I'm not, I was, I was happy when I heard this song. Like, I don't want this. I had to get that out of my mind and say, that's not a place I want to be. So this is what I mean by choice. You get to choose if you want to stay in a space or not. You get to choose if you want to nourish the seed that's being planted into you. As a child, it's kind of hard because your parents are the one that's planting the seed. But when you're an adult, you can't blame your parents anymore. You can't blame situations anymore. That's what becoming an adult means. You don't, you, you're no longer doing childish things, right? You're now being accountable for your choice. You get to choose if you're going to claim what the doctors say about you. You get to choose if you're going to accept their report. And I'm not saying that some reports are not true. I'm not saying that at all because God, he puts doctors here for a reason. So we are to listen, but he is, he lets you know who's the, who has the last word and that he is the healer. And the doctors can say one thing, but God can say another. But it's up to you to choose to hear what he has to say or, or go by the report of what the doctors has to say. Choose that as your last word. Choose that as your final say about what, about what they said about your life. If you're going to choose to nourish that seed. See, you don't have to. You don't have to accept that report. Come on. Man, I wish they would say it's a signal light or not. You don't have to choose that report. You don't have to be what people say about you. Right? You get to make your own mind about who you are. You get to accept what God has said about you. And I'm not just speaking to people about something that I know nothing about because I've been there. I've been in a space where I was uncomfortable with me. I've been in a space where I didn't love me. I've been in a space where I was accepting what other people had to say about me. I've, I've been in that space. So this, this is not something that I'm just saying that's going to happen, you know, overnight. It took me a while to get to this point to learn to love on me. Come on, what are you doing? I get frustrated with these drivers. <laughs> Lord, work on me about that. Y'all pray for me because these people cannot drive. <laughs> um, so, she just made me lose my whole train of thought because she's out here like, whatever. I'm going to go ahead and read what you guys are talking about because she just really almost had me in an accident. Um... The watcher said it's so important to think before you speak and not speak out of emotions. Oh my God. Watcher, that's so important. That's so important. That's definitely a lesson we need to learn. Um, I need to learn still. You know, sometimes I have to tell my kids, like, especially when my kids do something and I get very angry, I have to tell them, I'll say, you know what? I'll sit there for a moment. So, you know what? We'll talk about this later. Because I'm too angry. And I don't want to speak something into my kid's life that is going to have lasting effects. That is going to destroy them. Because words can destroy people. 
you can destroy your kids by the things that you speak into them. You know, I know everyone, I love my kids. I would never, but the things that you say to them can destroy them. You never know how they're going to receive what you say. You know? So instead of, um, like, I know I hear some people say like, man, that was so stupid. Why would you do that? That was so stupid. They're saying to your, ki your kids. And what I say, instead of that, I'd be like, you know what? I know that you're very intelligent. And I know that you didn't think that through. So what could you have done better? Like, I try to word it different. In my mind, I'm thinking that was so stupid. <laughs> Why would you have done that? But I'm not going to say that to my kid because I don't know how they're going to ex to receive that. They may hear, my mama just called me stupid. That may be what they heard. That's probably not what I said, but that may be what they heard because they just heard the negative word, the, the word stupid. But if I say, you know what? I know you're much more intelligent than that. They, they hear the word intelligence. My mom thinks I'm intelligent. My mom thinks I'm smart. So let me make sure that I live up to that. Right? It's all about how you word things. It's all about how you say things to people and thinking it through before you let it out. I used to have that discussion with the last person I dated all the time about the words that they say. And he would always say, well, I didn't mean it like that. You probably didn't, but that's how my mind heard it. So you could have said that a little differently. So it wouldn't be so harsh. Because if you love me, you're going to draw me with love and kindness and not be beat me up, not beat me down. You're going to say words that are going to encourage and build me. Even if it's even if the word is the truth, like I said, with my kids, I'm thinking in my mind that was very stupid. That was very <laughs> retarded. Like, I know you didn't think that through. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. But I'm not going to say that to them because I don't want them to hone in on the negative part. I want them to understand that you're very intelligent and you're not using your mind. You're not thinking. So I want to speak to that area of your mind. That is intelligent, right? The sun is like So I thought it was very important. I know we've talked about this before, about how important your words are, but I think it's very important to keep feeding this into people because we are becoming a society that is accepting what society has to say and not what God has to say. We're feeding ourselves with so much negativity of the world, with so much of, because we have so much information available to us. We have TikTok, we have Facebook, we have the news, we have um, Instagram, we have so much available information on there. And we have to learn to start focusing on the positive of it and not the negative of it. And guard our tongue and our space guard our energy understand that everything about you is sacred it's honorable and you should treat that space as something that's sacred as something that's honorable and don't allow people in or allow things to be fed into you that doesn't honor the sanctity of this that doesn't honor the space that God has granted you Right. So today we're just talking about oh, really we're just talking about a TikTok song, song that I heard that really had me in a bad space. It it didn't have me. It had a lot of people in a bad space. And I encourage you if you are and if I would say to you if you don't have a strong mind, if your mind is not strong and you're not planted. Um, in good ground, then I don't suggest that you watch this this song or you feed this song into your spirit. Um, because of, like I said, when I went through this person's page and started to listen to the song, um, it was so negative, right? It was, it was. Everybody was really talking about the anxiety, the bipolar, that you know, the, the mental health issues that they were having. Um, but when I first heard the song. That's not where my mind went to. My mind went to the peace of it. You know, 
that I would love to have this opportunity to be able to get a glass of wine, to go take a drive to the lake and be by myself, be away from my friends, be away from my family. I didn't view that isolation as a negative. I didn't view that moment to myself as a negative. I viewed it as a moment to share a space with just me and God. Because a lot of times this world where it's so many people around us that God's voice is unable to be heard, is is quiet. So there's so much noise around me. So I was like, oh, this song would be great to just take a moment to just be by myself with God. So again, we're talking about that, too, we, that you have choice. You get to choose what you're going to do with that isolation moment. Because there's going to be a time in everybody's life where God is going to isolate you. There's going to be a moment where there's in everybody's life where God needs to get you by yourself. Right? Where he needs to get you to a moment where it's just you and him. And you get to choose on what you do with that time together. What you do, you don't, either you're going to choose that moment to just feed yourself with the goodness of God and the things that he has to say about you, or you're going to use that time to feed yourself the negativities of the world. What the world has said about you, what you have said about yourself. Everything is about choice. Everything in this world is about choice. There's not, you don't get just one thing and not the other. You get to choose how that whatever happened to you in your life will affect you going forward. You can't always choose what happens to you, but you get to choose how you respond to it. How you allow it to move and operate in your life. You get to choose that. Life happens to everybody. We all, as long as you're breathing here, life is going to happen to you. There's going to be things that are going to happen to you, but you get to choose what you do going forward after whatever happened to you happened you get to choose if it's going to dictate you for the rest of your life or if it's just a moment in your life you get to choose if it's going to build you up or if it's going to tear you down and how you choose that is how you speak about it how you speak about it matters what you write down about it matters. What you accept other people to feed you matters. What you eat on matters. We got to get out of this, this microwave state of believing that everything comes right now. Everything has to come right now. Understand that this walk with God is a journey and it's a reason that it's a journey. It's a reason that it's a journey because anything worth having, anything worth cherishing takes time. I believe that God could have created the earth in one day. He could have created all of this in one day, but he took his time, right? He took his time and then on the seventh day he rested. So it was a journey. It didn't all happen at once. Why do you think that you're just automatically supposed to be in a space and be healed? Like this is a journey. It takes time. And it takes time to train your mind to see the positive. It takes time to, to plant a seed. Like remember I talked about when the doctors tell you you have anxiety or you have depression. It took time for you to get to that point. So it's going to take time for you to get healed. And you and it, the, it, the key to getting healed in that time is how you speak about it. Right? How you speak about it. What you write about it. Your words that you apply to it. That is what matters. Stop saying, I am depressed. Stop saying, I have anxiety. Stop saying I have um, mental health issues. Stop saying I have this disorder. Just because the doctor diagnosed it doesn't mean that that's the last word. Doesn't mean that that's who God said that you are because the Bible clearly says that's not who he says you are. His thoughts towards you are good and none of those things are good. None of those spaces feel good. None of those things that they said about you is good. 
So get confirmation from God about who you are. And I guarantee you, he's not about to say, um, yeah, I said you depressed. Yeah, I said um, you have bipolar disorder. Yeah, I said you have anxiety. He's never going to say that. Said God never. Like he's never going to say that. Fill yourself up with what God has to say about you. I'm done talking about this. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and pray about it because I, I really, this is really heavy on my spirit. And like I said last night, it really had me in tears as I was watching this, um, this video and the people, how many people had grasped on to this concept of the negativity in a song and how I viewed it totally different. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pray. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry. You guys were saying good morning. I'm sorry. Uh, let me take time to read what you were saying. Um, Watcher says, if you tell yourself something enough, you will start to believe it. Absolutely. What's in the heart comes out in the mouth. Ac yep. And guard our mind, heart, and eye gate. Yes. Yes, Walter. Um, so I see you understand what I'm saying here. <laughs> so I hope everyone else is understanding what I mean, um, that I'm not telling you that how you're feeling is not valid that's please don't take that away from this i'm not saying that um whatever it is that you're going through is not valid you don't have a reason to feel that way i'm not saying that at all because you have every right to feel how you feel you have every right what i'm saying is you have a choice as if you want to stay in that space or not or if you truly want to be healed if you truly want to say, I don't want to be depressed anymore. If you truly want to say, I don't want to have anxiety. This is something that I don't want to stay in. I don't want this. I don't want this on me. I don't want this label. You get to choose if you stay in that space or not. But if you continue to say, yes, this is who I am. I, I do have anxiety. I do. You're telling yourself, this is who I am. This is where I want to be. This is where I want to stay. So let me go ahead and pray for you. So our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil forever and ever. For thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory. Father, we come before you as humble as we know how, Lord God. Asking you to first forgive us of our sins and cast those sins into the lake of forgiveness, never again bringing it to your attention or mine. Father, we thank you for touching any of uh, anybody that we may have sinned against, Father. Place forgiveness in their hearts towards us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for touching our minds this morning, Lord God. Father, for helping us not to believe the report of what people say about us and to believe the report of what you said about us. Remind us what you said. Remind us that we are the head and not the tail. Remind us that we are blessed going in and blessed going out. Remind us, Lord, that your thoughts towards us is good. So the things that people speak into us that are negative is not of you. And help us to combat that. Help us to find words that can speak against that. Help us to find people that are going to speed and plant good, speak and plant good seed into us, Lord God. Help us to learn how to nourish good seed. Help us to focus on the positivity of everything in our lives, Lord God, no matter what it looks like. Like David said, it was good that I was afflicted. Help us to understand what David meant by that, that even in the bad, Father God, there was a good reason in that. And you had a purpose for that too, Lord God, and that you are going to bring us to, if you brought us to something, you're going to bring us out of it, Lord God. Help us to understand who we are in you. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you, Father God, for uh, rescuing us, for being there and carrying us, Lord God, even when we didn't recognize that you were there. Even when our minds couldn't wrap around the fact that you had been there and you had never left us or forsake us. Even when our mind was focused on what the world had to say about us, Lord, you were still standing in the gap between us, fighting on our behalf to help our minds understand that we are not what the world says we are, but we are who you say we are. Father, touch our minds. 
touch everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice because it wasn't by accident that you brought them here today to hear this word, Lord God. You have something for them to hear. Lord, you wanted them to know that you wanted to love on them, that they have purpose and that they don't have to stay in that space, Lord God. Touch them right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I honor you for everything you've done, for everything you're getting ready to do. I thank you for doing it not without us, Lord God, for letting us know who you are and who we are in you, that you remind us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, that we are created in your image and everything about you is good, so everything in us is good. And we don't have to accept anything other than the goodness of you. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for mercy and grace. I thank for you for fighting on our behalves, never leaving or forsaking us, Lord. I thank you for teaching our minds to learn the positive in things, for teaching our minds to honor the good in things, to only see the good and only accept the good. Father, I ask these prayers and blessings. Name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. So, you guys, guess what? I love you. If nobody told you today, know that I'm telling you that I love you. There's nothing that you can do about it. God loves you more. So, accept it and move on. Today is Worship Wednesday. I want you to take time to just love on God. To just, go ahead, baby, go. Um, to just love on God and worship him today. Thank him for saving your mind. For showing you the positive in everything. For showing you the good in you. When everyone else is talking about the bad in you. Just worship him for that. And keep that in mind that if God said, I created you in my image and God is good, then you are good. You are good. No matter what the report says, you're good. No matter what people have said about you, you're good. No matter what your circumstance is, you're good. Understand that. So have a wonderful and blessed Worship Wednesday, and if God willing, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.